let me ask you this question. As an atheist, do yes. you believe in truth as a concept? I, yes, I believe in 100% truth. In fact, that, um, as you can see, I'm wearing a black jacket. That is 100% truth. Can you deny the fact that I'm wearing a black jacket? If I'm colorblind, it wouldn't be black. But I'm not colorblind. But so are yeah. you colorblind? No, no, you're not. no, no. So this is 100% fact. This is 100% truth. I'm wearing a black jacket. Well, actually, actually, well, I guess, I Can guess. Can you deny that? The, hum the reality of human experience is more than simple material things. And we know that there are many things we know to be true, even though we have no way of evidencing or proving them. You know your mother loves you, and I'm sure she does. Yes. But you can't prove it. Is the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, is it a historical fact? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. It's not a historical fact? It is. Okay, name me any historian, except from, um, actually, even Josephus. Did Josephus say the resurrection happened? No, he just says the crucifixion happened. Aha, uh -huh. aha, uh -huh. I got you. I think that you have the right not to be a Muslim, and I think it is wrong that you should even have to worry about the fact that you're not a Muslim. Yeah, that's why I don't debate with the Muslims. Well. But, but why is it that we are living in Britain in the 21st century, and we have, uh, by all be it, an atheist, you know, a bit misguided, but otherwise a very pleasant guy, worried about what might happen to Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you so much. It's really nice. Brother, Fresh brother. Uh, it's really nice to no, talk to you. No, it is. I'm free. Just keep me free. Thank brother. you for your contribution today. Happy <laughs> Easter. Happy Easter. Here. Some gifts. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Take care. Go on, you say. Yeah, he, he, oh, you want one. Sorry. Yes, of course. Happy Easter. Thank you very much. Okay, you used to be a Muslim and you became an atheist. I lived Right. Okay. I've actually, I read the New Testament of the Bible. Yeah. Okay, and I've actually, I read an amazing book about Jesus. I don't know if you've read it. I don't know if you've read it. It's by Reza Rasna. Yes. Is that the life of time? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. I've not read it, but I've heard of it. It's an amazing book. Probably one of the greatest books ever written about Jesus, I would say. Okay. I would advise you to, I would advise you to read it. Shall we go somewhere quieter? Let's go somewhere quieter so we can pick you up on, on the microphone. Basically, the, the New Testament of the Bible regarding the life of Jesus, yeah. I think a lot of it is lies. Okay. A lot of, in the, in the case of the, the, the life that Jesus has, yeah. and I, looking into the book by Reza, yeah. there's too many, there's too many uh, things that don't make any sense. Such as? Um, okay, I'll, I'll start with the Sahindran trial. Okay, right. The, the trial with Jesus in Pontius Pilate. Yeah. Now, in the Bible, uh, Pontius Pilate says, look, I, I can't find any fault in Jesus. Yeah. This man is basically perfect and um, let's, I'll give you someone else to crucify. We're going to give you Barabbas instead. And the, the, the Jewish people in the crowd say, no, no, we, we don't want Barabbas to get crucified. We want Jesus to get crucified. Okay. And he has blasphemed or whatever excuse they've come up with. Basically, what Reza's trying to explain to Christians is that verse, that story in the Bible has been made up. Because for one thing, uh, Pontius Pilate does not need the approval of the Jews to crucify Jesus of Nazareth. He never asked for the approval of the Jews. Well, the Jews persuaded him to crucify Jesus. They pressured him to crucify yeah, Jesus. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They pressured him into crucifying Jesus. Yeah. Pontius Pilate does not need to listen to the Jews. He doesn't, but why does he? Because it, I, what, basically what has happened is an open shut case. Jesus has committed, I, Jesus has committed treason. That is why he's been crucified. He that's the reason that they, they, they pushed on, on Pilate, yeah. He has committed treason by attacking the temple. The Bible mentions the fact No, that no, no, hold on. That, that was not a punishable offence according to, to Roman law. 
They weren't bothered by that. They weren't bothered about these petty skirmishes between the Jews. No, no, he attacked the temple. Yeah. They were bothered by that. <laughs> no, they, they, the, the Romans were not so bothered by that. The Jews were bothered by that. The Jewish people of the time were bothered by that. Pontius Pilate, what Pontius Pilate was worried about was a revolt. He was worried about unrest in the province because it would affect his career. It would affect his standing before Caesar. It would affect his own ability to progress in the Senate. It would affect his own standing within the Roman honor system. Okay, I'll ask you this question. This is the question I always ask Christians. Let's see if you've got the answer. Because no, no Christian has really got the answer to this question. They beat around the bush, they make some kind of excuses. But I'm gonna ask you this question. Why was Jesus crucified? Why was he crucified? Obviously, you believe that Jesus is the perfect man, yes? You believe he's the son of God, God at the same time, the Holy Spirit, three in one, Trinity. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Why was someone who is perfect, be, why would a perfect person be crucified? A perfect person is someone who doesn't make a single mistake. Can I ask a question? Are you looking for the theological answer or the historical answer? I've got the answer. That's why I'm an atheist. Well, no, I'm asking, you're asking me a question. Yeah, yeah. And I need to clarify in what way you're asking that question. Are you asking theologically or historically? I would say in this context, historically. Historically. So the reason why Christ was crucified historically was that the Jews were um, wanting him dead because he claimed to be God and he claimed to be the Messiah. Okay. And that's why they wanted him dead. But they didn't have the authority to kill anyone. They had to take it to the Roman governors for that to happen. The Roman governors were not interested in the petty little squabbles of the Jews about this teacher saying this or that teacher saying the other. They didn't really care. So when the Jews came to Pontius Pilate, they changed their accusation to he has made himself king and there can be no king but Caesar. So they turned it from a theological issue to a political one. And um, Pontius Pilate was concerned for his own reputation, for his own standing, for his own benefit, that there shouldn't be revolt or disturbance as there often would, uh, as there often was in Palestine, as there often was in Palestine. So he acquiesced to the Jewish demand to have him killed, despite trying to have him not killed. So that, so, that's the reason historically so, why he was you, crucified. Do you believe that Jesus has done nothing wrong in the case that he's been crucified for no reason? Is that what you're saying? Yes. So he's done nothing wrong? I believe that. You understand attacking the temple was treason because the temple is under the jurisdiction of Rome. So by attacking the temple, he's indirectly attacking Rome. So that is high treason. I spoke to an evangelical Christian called David Lynn. He came to Speaker's Corner. I remember a few months back. Yeah. Yeah, I spoke to him and even he admitted, even David Lynn, the Canadian evangelical Christian, even he admitted that Jesus probably committed Can treason. Can I reply? Because I think my reply will, will help to elucidate this conversation. We Christians don't judge what is right and what is wrong by what the law says. The state says that abortion is okay. We Christians say it's wrong. Okay, yeah. The state says that the definition of a family is whatever you want it to be. Yeah. We Christians say that is wrong. I agree with you. One second. That issue. We Christians <laughs> say that it is good and acceptable to adopt. Sharia law has no concept of adoption. So what the state says is right and wrong is not of any consequence to us. When I say that Christ did nothing wrong, I mean that he did not break God's law in any way. Whether he broke the laws of the state, we can debate. But for me, if you break the laws of the state because you're keeping God's law, you've done nothing wrong. He still got crucified. He still committed. He was crucified. He yes. still committed treason. I believe, hundred percent. Wait, I am telling you that from a Christian point of view, that if to follow God's law you have to commit treason, you're guiltless. You have committed no crime. But you, you see, you're doing the stuff. You're a very good Christian. You're doing what every Christian should do. You are defending Jesus. Yeah. That is your job as a Christian. Like, like the job of a Muslim is to make excuses for Muhammad. Yeah. That's what every Muslim does. Your argument that 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 the disturbance in the temple that's recorded in, in for example, John 2. Jesus attacked the temple, that is a fact. The what, Bible even mentions it. What, what, in John 2, what he does is he overturns the money changers tables and he drives out the animals. And there was a fight and a disturbance inside the temple. And Christ upset a lot of people that day. Yeah, but that was not constituted as treason towards the Roman state. Let me give you an example of what is treason to the Roman state. Treason to the Roman state is what happened to the earliest Christians who, when they were commanded 
to give um, um, homage and, and worship um, and glory to the, the Caesar as a god, they refused. They wouldn't burn, they wouldn't put the salts on the burning incense to give uh, the worship to Caesar because that was to say that Caesar was Lord and Christians would reply Christos Kyrie or Kyrie is Christos. Christ is Lord, not Caesar, not Kaiser is Christos. So not believe, Kaiser so is Kyrie. So you the whole, I, the whole story r regarding it, the, the fact that even Pontius Pilate's wife gets involved, that she had a dream of Jesus and this man is innocent. Don't, don't you think yes, I believe of, that. Don't you think all of this has been made up? No, I don't. They need to come up with a story. Why, why should I believe that it's made up? There's many, okay, I'll explain. Look, I, I can't convince you. I'm not here for you to become an atheist. I'll be wasting my time. And you won't be able to convince me to become a Christian. I'm, I, I'm far if too- If you're making those decisions from the beginning, then probably not. However, I think that- No, but what, I'm hold on you. one second. Are you willing but, to become an atheist second. today? What, what, Are you if, willing to become an atheist no, today? No, let, let, I'll answer that question. I'll answer that question. If atheism is the truth, yeah. I want to be an atheist. Yeah, but you're not interested in the truth. You're, in, you're interested in biblical Actually, truth. Actually, I'm really interested in the truth. You believe in biblical truth? I'm really you interested in the truth. You believe what the Bible says? Yes, that's right. And because I believe it to be true. If you can find, give me good reasons to show that it's not, then I'm willing to listen. But hold on. You're saying that you're not interested in the truth because you're not interested or not willing to change your beliefs. I've got the if, truth, that's why. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so, so out of the two of us, I'm more open-minded than you. But I, I don't think you have any interest in becoming an atheist today. If you can give me really good reasons if I could, to I, not I, be a Christian and to become an atheist. I could spend 24 hours with you today. The whole day I could spend with you. I don't mind doing it. Depends what arguments you marshal. I to have my dinner Depends what your arguments you marshal. If you can't argue, uh, marshal good arguments. But let me ask you this question. As an atheist, do yes. you believe in truth as a concept? I, yes, I believe in 100% truth in the fact that, um, as you can see, I'm wearing a black jacket. That is 100% truth. Can you deny the fact that I'm wearing a black jacket? If I'm colorblind, it wouldn't be black. But I'm not colorblind. But so are yeah. you colorblind? No, no I'm not. not. No, I'm not. So this is 100% fact. This is 100% truth. I'm wearing a black jacket. Well, actually, actually, well, I guess... I Can guess, you deny that? No, I don't. I don't, because I have an interest in truth. But if you're saying... I believe in truth. Are you saying that truth is only... Truth is only a material, observable fact? Is that what you're saying? No, it's more than that, but I'm, I'm, I just gave you one example. Let me give you an... Let me, get, let me ask you this question. Yes. Okay, prove to me that your mother loves you. Prove to me that your mother loves you? Yes. Yeah, I, well, just she can just come here and she'll tell you. Right, but what happens if she's lying? Why, why would my mum lie about loving me? It doesn't make sense. But why, why, why? Well, maybe she's doing it out of self-interest. I, I don't see any other reason. If she didn't love me, she'd tell me, wouldn't she? How do you know? Why would she lie? It doesn't make sense. Why? Why would she tell you the truth? Because she's my mother. But how do you? Well, how do you know that she loves you? I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming she does. <laughs> but what proof can you marshal to prove that? Just speak to my mother, she'll tell you. Okay, so you're saying her my testimony... My mother's not here, I'm, I'm here on my own You're today. saying her testimony is enough? Yes. Okay, so I say to you, God exists. Is my testimony enough? Not in the case of that, no. Okay, so why is because, it... Because my mum 100% exists. You can't prove to me 100% that I've God exists. I've never denied the existence of your mother. What I drew into question was whether your mother loved you. Yes, okay. So I'll ask you again, what evidence can you prove? What evidence can you bring forward to show that your mother loves you? Well, she'd have to come in and have a chat with you. She'll explain to me that she loves me. That, that will, that, she could be lying to me. Yeah, but that's your opinion, whether she, you think she's lying or not. I, I guess the point I'm trying to make to you yes. is, that, is that we can interpret facts however we want to. Evidence But I just is, gave an example which you cannot deny. I'm wearing a black jacket. And that, is I, and, um, that is 100% fact. That is 100% truth. Well, no, hold on one second. I'm Firstly, a South Asian man. I've got, I've got glasses on. Can yeah, you deny and, the and, fact? and all of these things. These are all facts. Well, you haven't let me finish my point. Sorry. All of these things are facts. All of these things are true. I have no problem accepting scientific knowledge. Right? What I'm saying to you is that the human experience, the, hum the reality of human experience, is more than simple material things. And we know that there are many things we know to be true, even though we have no way of evidencing or proving them. You know your mother loves you, and I'm sure she does. Yes. But you can't prove it. But the experience of her love is as real as the black jacket that you're wearing and the glasses. And the reality of that love is as real to you more than simply the observable material world. 
Okay. Would you agree with me from the evidence, the example that I've used? Yes, yes. That the human experience is broader, deeper, and wider than simply uh, the, the the physicality of that experience. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yes. And you agree with me? Yes, I do. And would you agree with me? But I, that as I already explained to you. you I, I'm going to come. I'm, I'm going to come to that. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, would you also agree with me that there is no way that you could evidence the fact that your mother loves you? She could write a letter about how much she loves me. Yeah, but she could she could be lying. Well, it's your opinion. It's your opinion. Yes, it is my opinion. In this hypothetical, in this, do a thought experiment with me. Uh, let us imagine, because obviously your mother is not in dispute here, and, and she really does love you. We both know that. Yes. All right. But let us just imagine, for the sake of argument, yes. that your mother has behaved your entire life exactly as you have experienced her for your entire life, but for the whole time she was lying to you. How would you know? Do the thought experiment with me. How would you know? But I, 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 I mean, I don't think she would. I don't think she would be lying. No, the thought experiment that I'm asking you to do yeah. is she's behaved exactly as you remember her right now. Yes. Nothing is different. But in the thought experiment that we're doing, we are we are saying that she was lying. That's the thought experiment. Okay. 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 How would you know? Yeah, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know yeah. exactly. And so there is a, a gap between how we interpret facts and, and how we interpret experiences vis-a-vis -vis what we know to be true. Okay, I'll, I'll ask you this question. My relationship with my mother, is that the same relationship that you have with Jesus? What relationship, make, what relationship is more real? Do I know that Jesus loves me? Absolutely I do. Yeah, but that, the point is, you've never met Jesus. You have no relationship with Jesus. You don't. You assume you do. As a Christian, as a Christian, I believe that I have met Jesus, but it's a spiritual experience. Well, I'm sorry, I think you might I be dreaming. Not, I think I you might be dreaming. That's fine. That's fine. I'm quite, I'm quite happy to dream. Okay. Yeah. Don't knock it off today. Yeah. I'll try my best. I'll try to keep my hands together. Look good now, yeah. I'll try to keep my hands together. So, so my point to you is, right? Just, just, just because SC Dawa has joined us late, I, I just need to fill you in on the picture. This brother here is a former Muslim. He's now an atheist. So he is he has rejected Islam. Uh, and we're talking about whether um, we can trust the Bible and on what basis can we know what is true. The life of Jesus. Yeah, we're talking about exactly. We're talking about the life of Jesus. So, so my point to you is, you're saying that your mother could write me a letter yes. to tell me of her love. Yes. Well, Paul wrote letters about Jesus telling of his love. You're saying that your mother could come and talk to me. Well, the first apostles went out and spoke to people. So all How do you the... know the apostles weren't lying? That's the same point. Is it, right, let's, you said let, the same let, thing about let, let, let us deal with that very question. Let us assume, let's do a thought experiment. The apostles were lying. Yes. Okay, this is our thought experiment. The apostles were lying. Yes. And everything else that we know about the apostles remains true. But they were liars. Now we know that all except one of the apostles died a martyr's death for the faith that they proclaimed, yes. with the exception of John. We know that lots of people can be deceived and die for uh, a deception. Communists used to blow themselves up in Vietnam against the Americans because they believed in communism, but it was a lie. Have you ever met anyone who's willing to die for something that they knew was a lie? Have you ever heard of someone who's willing to die for something that they knew was I, a lie? I, I can answer you that question. Please. The reason these people died for Jesus is that they couldn't accept that he had lied to them. They couldn't accept that he wasn't the Messiah. Do you understand? So they, they love Jesus that much that they're willing to do it. I'm sure lots of people are willing to die for people they love. Okay, here's, Whether your mother here's your my counter-argument to that. Yes. I can accept that some people can have such a traumatic episode that they will fight against reality, okay? No, I'm, okay. I'm talking about the love you yeah, have but of, the, like, but, of but, your children or but, your mom or but dad. But the witness to the resurrection is multiple different witnesses. Now granted, let's pretend that six out of the 12, let's do a thought experiment, right? Let's say that six out of the 12 were so traumatized by the defeat of Jesus that he wasn't what they wanted him to be. The fact of the matter is, that the Christians that went around, according to Bart Ehrman in his latest book, The Triumph of Christianity, was up to 20. 
up to 20. That's his, that's his argument. This is the scholarship of, of well, Bonhoeffer. 20 people saw the resurrection. Up to 20 people were so convinced that Christ had risen from the dead, it transformed their lives. Now, statistically, to have the kind of psychotic episode that you're talking about, statistically, 20 people having that psychotic episode is impossible. There's just too many. One, two, three, a uh, push, four, really being generous, five, I can, I, 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 I've, but I've got, not 20. I've got a very good point for you here. This, I want you to address my point first. I, 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 think the I think the resurrection is the biggest lie in history. I don't think it happened. So you're saying it's a lie? Yes. Do people die for what they know is a lie? Yeah, but I don't think that actually happened. You, you're not actually answering my question, so I'll ask you again, and I want you to specifically answer this question. Yes. The question is, yes. do you know of other accounts where people lied for some, died for something that they knew was a lie? Okay, here's mine. I, I actually have examples to give you, but I, I want to hear yours. But you have those cult people, and like when they do the mass suicide, they probably know the cult, they know the cult is wrong. No, 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 they died because they believed. Well, they probably maybe did it. They no, no, no. Crazy. no, they died because they believed. Someone doesn't kill themselves because they think they're lying. No, 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 the, the point is... It, it just, I don't respect you for this. must have to be you. All right, <laughs> okay, fair enough. I think it's a matter of different interpretation. We've got different opinions on this. No, I want you to address this point. Let's not get around it. Yeah. We've got people that you're accusing of lying. Okay, yeah. so we're doing a thought experiment and saying that they are liars. Hello. Do people die for what they know to be not true? I'm sure there are people like that. Give me examples. I can't give you one right now. Any, uh, uh, Shall I give you an example? You're going to talk about Jesus. No, I'm going to talk about spies. Spies? Spies. Spies. People that are, are espionage, they, uh, they, there's plenty of accounts in history where people have deliberately died because they knew that, that, that what they were dying, that, that, that they were lying. You know, they, they were given a false testimony. I'm not a spy. I'm not a spy. And they die because people are accusing them of being a spy. Of being a spy. And they're lying when they keep up the lie right up to the moment that they die. Oh yes, because they have to pretend they're not a spy. Yeah, because really what is motivating them yeah. is a deeper truth, yeah? And their opponents have already discovered them. Yes, yeah. You know, yeah. so there's a bit of a psychological weapon, you're killing an innocent man, okay? Now, the apostles, they, these people, they, there was a, a transaction in their mind, an emotional transaction. They were dying for a greater cause, the cause of their country, in a war. Yes, yeah. Yeah, okay? For the apostles to be liars willing to die, they had to be able to gain, to feel that they were gaining something that was greater, or dying for something that was greater than the lie for which they were dying. But the fact of the matter is, in the central teaching of their faith, the whole foci of their identity was that Christ had risen from the dead. There wasn't a greater narrative driving them. They weren't profiting from, but there wasn't some other narrative under which the lesser narrative stood that they were willing to sacrifice for the lesser narrative because of the greater narrative. So you believe in all the stories of the idea that there was the empty tomb and they, they hid the, they hid, um, yes. the, the gods hid his body or something? I mean, no, I don't believe the gods hid his body. I want you to answer the question, do you believe, do you believe that Christ died for, do, do you believe yes. That, that people die for what they know is not true. I'm sure there must be, there must be examples. Uh, I've given you my examples. Yeah, give give, give me some, some other examples. Something that is not true. Yeah, dying. people dying for what they know isn't true. Yes. Dying for something, like. something that is not true. Dying. Maybe it's like a form of like killing or something. like. They know, they know killing is wrong, but they can't help it. You, you're, not, you're not giving me an example of what I'm asking for. I'm asking for an example of where people have died for a lie. That they know is a lie. Yeah, I don't think I can give you one at the okay. moment. Okay, so which do you think is more likely? That people died because they believed that what they were dying for was true, or people died because they knew what they were dying for was false? Which is more likely in your human experience? People... 
dying for something they knew was true. People dying for what they believed was true yes. versus people dying for what they know is false. People which dying is, for, for something they know is true. Yes. Yeah. Which is which is the that's, more likely. That's, that's more likely. That's more likely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. in terms of thinking about the apostles, yeah. the fact that they died preaching this religion, yeah. would you agree with me that the evidence indicates that they genuinely believed what they were saying? Yeah. No. You, so you're still saying they're lying? I think... I, even though we uh, know they died, and even though you've just said that people don't lie, die for what they know to be false. The point is whether we can say 100% that the resurrection happened. That is the fundamental I point. I want you to address the point that I'm asking. Yeah, but I've asked you a question. Okay. You obviously believe that they died for something that, is, that they believed in. They were 100% Okay, uh, so you're saying that you're saying we don't know that the resurrection happened. Let me just ask you this. Okay. Ask, ask, it's a very good question. That I always ask questions. But you haven't really answered. You haven't really addressed my point. But carry on. Okay. This is the question I. Always, this is another question I always ask Christians. Is the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth? Is it a historical fact? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. It's not a historical fact. It is. Okay. Name me any historian, except from. Um, Actually, even Josephus, did Josephus say the resurrection happened? No, he just says the crucifixion happened. Aha, aha, I got you. No, you haven't, but carry on. Did Josephus <laughs> say the resurrection happened, yes or no? No. Exactly, that proves my point. What does that even, prove? Even it Josephus, proves... even Josephus no. said the resurrection it didn't happen. It doesn't prove, even it doesn't Josephus prove anything. Even Josephus didn't say the resurrection, let no. me. What does and Josephus, I'm not a historian, I'm just Jose a what does do but let's, let's be clear about what Josephus does say. Because not, I have it. No, no, hold on. I just answered you the question. You've, you just no, answered my question. You no, said Josephus said. Let's, let's just have a look at what Je Josephus says, no, shall Josephus we? No, Josephus didn't talk about the resurrection. Let's just have a look at what Josephus says. He doesn't talk about the resurrection. He talked <laughs> about the other man. Let's just have a look. Right. There was a man so called Josephus. Jesus. was writing in 37 to 120 AD. And in his book, Antiquities, book 18, chapter 3, part 3. Yes. And I'm just going to give you a summary of how what he talks about. He talks about Christ yes. as being a performer of miracles. Yes. Do you believe Christ performed miracles? No, I'm an atheist. Okay, so, so the historian Josephus is saying Christ performed miracles. Right. Josephus says Christ was a teacher. Do you believe Christ was a teacher? Uh, sorry, I just, I just got to say one quick thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Maybe he was a magician. Okay, we'll, we'll come to that. Uh -huh. We'll come to that. We'll come to that. So Josephus says Christ was a miracle worker that Christ was a teacher, that Christ had Jewish and Gentile followers, that, that Christ was called Christ, as in the Messiah, that he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. In your opinion. That he was... <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> my, my heckler, he's been heckling me all day. He's been heckling me all day. So, uh, that was actually quite funny. <laughs> On that occasion, it was funny. Okay, so, he, he, he is acute... <clears throat> Josephus says that the leading Jew stoned James, and that the leading Jews accused the Christians of being breakers of the law. Now, listen carefully. If we compare these points made by Josephus yes. to what we find in the New Testament, we find clear dovetailing between the two accounts. Oh, can I just say this? They dovetail well. So the New Testament is my evidence of Christ's resurrection, and the New Testament is historical evidence. Okay. Like you... Josephus. Basically, you, you answered my question. I asked you very simply, does, did Josephus mention the resurrection of Jesus? And I've just said no. You said no. Yeah. So that proves my whole point. What so does it, it doesn't prove? matter what you say. I, well, you've well, just answered my question. Why do you think that Josephus not mentioning the resurrection yeah, proves your point? Explain to me the logic. Because if I the resurrection happened, this would be one of the greatest things ever to happen in history. It is accounted for in the New Testament. Would, wouldn't Josephus have mentioned it, that Jesus rose from the dead? Not wouldn't if he, he didn't believe it? it. That's madness. Not if wouldn't he didn't it? believe it. What? Not if he didn't believe it. Yeah, but if it happened, if it was a historical fact, you believe 100% the resurrection happened, yes? Yes. So why wouldn't Josephus mention it? It doesn't make sense. Well, because what we what we find in Josephus', Josephus writing, he's, he's talking about Christ as a historical figure. Yes, he but he's not talking him, about him being the son but if, of God. But if your logic and is God that, at the same time. Well, firstly, let, let's just be clear, that the an argument from silence doesn't work. You, you are aware of that logical... Well, you've answered my question many times. You, you, are you aware that an argument from silence does not work? Logically, no, no. philosophically, an argument from silence doesn't work. 
I'll explain to you this way. No, no, no. It's a, it's a logical fallacy to make an argument from silence. Yes, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yes, okay? you're right. You're you right. can't make an argument from silence. But that's not really the point. No, but it is the point because yeah. you're making the point that Josephus is silent about the resurrection as if it proves something. It yeah. proves nothing. All it proves is that he doesn't talk about it. What he does talk yeah, but you're about. Though, why he's not talking about what it. He does, what he does talk about, though, is he says that Christ is a miracle worker, a teacher, had Jewish and Gentile followers, was called Christ, and was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Now, let me ask you this question. Yes. You're making a big deal about Josephus' silence. Josephus no, says Christ performed miracles. Do you believe Christ performed miracles? No, I don't believe he did. So I, you're selectively using Josephus then? Let me just explain to you this way. Okay. Sorry, because you, you might be you might not understand what I'm trying to say here. I'm not just looking at it from Josephus' perspective. I'm talking I'm talking about in, in complete general if you speak to most historians looking at that time. Yeah. Looking into the time of the life of Jesus, all those years ago. Yeah. There's very I don't think you can find a single historian who's gonna say hundred percent that the resurrection happened. That hundred percent Jesus is God, the Son of God, God at the same time, Holy Trinity, he's number one, he's the perfect man, he's an absolute genius. No historian is going to say that. Well actually and historians even, historians like Doctor Doctor um, Mike Lacona, for example. He's a historian, and he would say that the, the, he would agree with you, historians don't talk in terms of absolute facts, they talk in terms of probabilities and most likelihoods. The, the best way That's, to look no, at it... No, hold on one second. Sorry. That is how historians work, right? They, they, they take together the collective evidence and then they find what is called the hypothesis with explanatory power or explanatory scope. Yes. That's how historical inquiry works. Okay. And Dr. David Lycona, who is an historian, yes. makes arguments for the resurrection all the time. So your argument that no historian is wrong because I've just named a historian. Okay, I'll explain to you this way. Dr. Bruce Metzger, he's another one. Okay, okay, you just named two. Okay. Dr. Daniel Wallace, there's a third. Okay. The point is... Dr. James White, that's a fourth. The point is, as a Christian, you are obviously going to say that the resurrection happened. Of course you are. And you're obviously going to say it doesn't because you're an atheist. Yeah. That's, uh, Why are your presuppositions more acceptable than my presuppositions? Yeah, but what makes more sense? Someone died on the cross, they died. Or someone died on the cross and after three days they rose up again. What makes more sense? He died on the cross, case closed. If there is or does he die on the cross after three if, days he rose well, again? Well, I, I, firstly, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad that we're speaking to someone who's not bothering to deny the crucifixion. Yes. Okay. So I'm not. I'm, but I just want to say sorry. No. Uh, let me let uh, me address that point. You've, you've asked the question about which makes more sense. Yes. So let me ask you this. Let, let, I, I will answer that question. If there was no God, yes. Then it would make sense to say that Christ died and that was the end of the matter. Yes. If there is a God, which I don't believe. And I'm God atheist. and God prophesies that Christ would be crucified and resurrected. Yes. Yeah. Which uh, which we believe is in the Old Testament. Okay, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm, One I'm second. More into the New Testament. Okay. I'm not into yeah. the Old Testament. Well, the Old Testament prophesies about the Messiah. The whole point of the Old Testament is it's talking about the Messiah. Are you aware of that fact? Well, did, haven't the Jews rejected Jesus? Are you aware that the Old Testament? Yeah, and the Old Testament is the Hebrew is, Bible. Yes, yes. That is talking about the Messiah as a coming figure. Yeah, but not are you aware about Jesus, of that? They're not talking about Jesus specifically. Are, not, uh, is the word Jesus actually mentioned? No, it doesn't. Old, it doesn't name is Jesus. The, is Jesus mentioned in the Old Testament? Exactly. Okay. I so, I, 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 so the thing that I'm pointing out to you. There is no mention of Jesus in the Old Testament. The thing that I am pointing out to you. Open shut case. Well, I'm sorry, but you're case wrong closed. again. No, you're not. I just you're asked wrong you. Again. I just asked you. You're wrong. Look, you can assert. You, you can the, assert as much as you want. I'm going to make this point now. I'm going to make this point now. Okay. You can assert as much as you want. There's no mention of Jesus right? in the Old Testament. Actually, actually, let, let us, let us just look at this. It doesn't even say his name. Does he say Jesus? It talks about the Messiah. So let's that give an example. Anyone. That could be me. Let's, yeah, well, okay, so this has to happen to you then. <laughs> this has to happen to you. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from my deliverance are the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I have no rest, yet you are holy. O you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel, in your fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were delivered. In you they trusted were, and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All who see me sneer at me. They separate with their lips. They wag their heads saying, commit yourself to the Lord. Let him deliver you. Let him rescue you because he delights in him. Yet you are he who brought me forth from the womb. 
You made me trust when upon my mother's breasts, upon you I was cast from birth. You have been my God from my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me, strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They open wide my mouth, at, they open wide their mouth at me, as ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. And you have laid me in the dust of death. The dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil dovers have encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now, what happened to Jesus Christ? In the case of the crucifixion, you're talking about the crucifixion. Yes. Well, according to, well, apparently, yeah, the whole. He what was happened? Hanged. He was hanged, wasn't he? He was what? Hanged on the he cross. He was pierced, hands and feet. He was nailed to a cross. Yes. Right. This psalm was written centuries before Christ ever lived. Now, it still doesn't prove the resurrection happened. One second, one second. Oh. Right? So yeah. it says in the psalm that, that the Messiah will be pierced, will be crucified. Yeah, but he might not be the true Messiah. He so could be a fake. Right? Name me another Messiah that claimed to be a Messiah that was crucified. There must have been another one. Give me another one. Give me another name of someone claiming to be the Messiah that was crucified. Yeah. I don't really believe in Messiah. Let, let, me, let honest, me give you another I don't one. Believe in any let, 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 let me let, let me give you. I don't believe in Messiah. Let me give you another one from Isaiah no 53. Messiah. Let me give you another one from Isaiah 53. Now, both of these texts that I'm quoting to you are centuries before Jesus. But think about what you know, according to Riza Aslan, of what you know about Jesus, and just listen to these words, okay? Yes. So have, have your picture of Jesus in your mind, that he's, what happened to him in history. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of parched ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening of our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before the shearers. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people to whom the stroke was due, he, his grave was assigned with wicked men. Tell me, what happened to Jesus? I think, he, I think he was crucified, yes. And what happened in terms of the people around him? Did they esteem him? What do you mean? Did they, did they say, this is a man of honor, he is the Messiah, we think he's great? Or did they mock him? Uh, I, I wasn't there. I mean, I, I don't really, I wasn't there, was I? So, what we have is our prophecies in the Old Testament that are fulfilled in the life of Christ. Let, let me just say something. He fulfills these prophecies. This is why he is the Messiah. That is, that is not the point. The point is whether the resurrection actually happened. Well, I've tried you, to talk to you about of, the resurrection. You've gone in a bit of a tandem here. It, we, we, we have gone into a bit of a tandem, but the tangent has organically grown. So let's come back to the resurrection. And I don't believe it's the Messiah either. Let, let, let's come back to the resurrection. What do you think happened to those, let's use Bart Ehrman's number. Bart Ehrman, by the way, is an agnostic, non-Christian scholar. Argument on some biased Christian now. I'm basing it on an, the leading academic who is himself an apostate and has made his career out of attacking the Christian faith. In his latest book, The Triumph of Christianity, he says 
that 20 followers of Jesus, the number was around 20, were so convinced that Jesus had risen from the dead that it radicalized them and changed their lives. Reza Aslan also makes that same point, that the people believe that Christ had risen from the dead. So my question to you now to answer is this, what happened 2000 years ago that so convinced those people that Christ had risen from the dead? What happened? They, I, I answered your question. Well, answer it again. They loved him so much that they couldn't accept that he had let them down. That's what it comes down How to. How do you get from that to them believing that Christ had risen from the dead? But Christ didn't rise from the dead. That is a lie. You ha you're not addressing the question I'm asking. The question I am asking is this one. What convinced them that Christ had risen from the dead? I think the whole story regarding the Bible issue of him, of the res I don't think anything can convince them. I think they were just very upset. They were, that, that's what Resurrection says in his book. They were really, they were, they were mortified that Jesus had let them down. You're not addressing the question. So you're saying that nothing convinced them. So why did they go and preach it? Who? The apostles. Yeah, it's, they were just brainwashed. That's the best way to look By at it. By who? By their own stupidity. So they brainwashed themselves into believing that Christ had risen from the dead and he wasn't dead. He wasn't alive. They were. They felt he. They thought it happened. So they thought it happened. Yeah, it didn't happen. So, the, so they believed it. I don't know the whole apostles, do I? Do I know Paul? Of course, I don't know the apostles. What was the apostles preaching? Were they preaching that Christ had risen spiritually from the dead, or that he rose from the bodily from the dead? They, they're just preaching that he's the Messiah, whatever. Madness. No, you, you, you don't know what they're preaching. They preach that Christ rose bodily from the dead. Yeah, that's, that, as I explained to you, that is a lie. It's on their own imagination. So, they, you're saying that they made it up? Yes, they're liars. They're frauds. Okay. Why did they lie? Because to spread Christianity. They wanted to create a religion. Why did they die for that lie? Because they died for Christianity. A lie. They died for something that they knew they were making up. No, they believed it happened, but they didn't. So they believed it happened? Yes. So why did they believe it happened? Because they were brainwashed. I answered your question. They brainwashed themselves and to believe something that they knew was a lie and then died for it. That's your argument. And because of the love that they had for this guy, I believe. Obviously, I don't, I don't think that, you know, he was this perfect guy. I, I think he was basically like a criminal, basically. I, I, he, he was someone who wanted to take on the establishment. That is who Jesus was. Unfortunately, Jesus, Jesus was a peasant. He was an illiterate peasant from Galilee. I, I, I That's think, how I think you're to... avoiding the, 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 the point, which is that people, we know that people don't die for something that they know is false. Yeah, but that still doesn't which means point. that Which means that the apostles genuinely believed that Christ had really risen from the dead. And if they genuinely believed it, we have to ask the question, what convinced them? Now, you're trying to argue that they just convinced one another. Now, groups of people... They love each other, so they're, yeah. they're, they're, you know, they're convincing each other that look... But, at, but, convince it, but if they're convincing them that Christ had risen bodily from the dead, is what you're saying. Now, the thing is, I can believe, I could have gone with your argument if the apostles had gone out preaching that Christ had risen only spiritually. I could have gone with that. Because people can convince themselves of any spiritual truth. Okay, I'll answer that question. But one second. The thing that they're claiming is that Christ rose bodily from the dead. That the tomb was empty. And also, we have this to consider. Let us consider this other point. The Jewish authorities, you know and I know, didn't like the early Christian movement. They wanted to stop it dead. If Christ didn't rise bodily from the dead, why did they just not produce a body, drag it through the streets of Jerusalem and say, here is your false messiah, he has not risen from the dead? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you that question. I believe they, they saw the body when he, when he was crucified. He died on that cross, yes? You believe he died on the cross? We both believe that, yeah. Okay. So it's pretty obvious they saw his body when he died on the cross. Do they need to keep producing the body two, three times to show everyone, look, this guy... If people are going around saying that he's risen from the dead, yes. So how do you know they didn't produce the body? How do you know? You weren't alive back then. So how do you because know? if they had produced the body, if yeah, they had produced you know the, body, produce the body, then, well, if they had produced the body, the whole of the, Christ, the preaching of Peter would have been made into a mockery. Christ, Peter yeah, was going Peter around, Peter, 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 you keep accusing Peter of lying. Peter yeah. died for this belief in 64 AD. What belief, what reason, what, what does he gain from dying for a lie? People lie to just, gain something, I do answer, they not? I answered your question. Not really. 
He wants to spread Christianity. Yes, but he died for that belief. Yeah, but does he not want to spread Christianity? That is the point. He died for the belief, right? He, he died to spread Christianity. That's what I believe. Do people die for what they know is a lie? They die for Christianity, yes. So Peter was lying and then died for it. That makes no sense. He was lying. Look, basically, what, the resurrection never happened. So that's basically, that's a non-argument. It does happen because that's what triggered the first apostles to go out and preach that Christ had risen from the dead. This is what I forgot to tell you. If something is a historical fact, no one would be able to deny it. So why am I denying the resurrection? There are plenty of historical facts that are being denied all the time. But something like is... the resurrection. Yeah, then it's not a historical fact, is it? No, like there, 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 are, there are many historical facts that are in dispute all the time. I'll give you an example, the, the, the classic one, whenever someone's having a debate. Like, the, what you know, did Hitler come up with the final solution or did the Nazis emerge with an idea? The most current theory is that the Nazis emerged with an idea about the final solution. Now, the, the fact of the matter is, the way that historians come to that conclusion is they take all the available evidence and they find the hypothesis that gives the most explanatory power. You have to give me an hypothesis that accounts for these things. One, Christ died on a cross. Two, the early followers, the very first Christians, were preaching that Christ had risen bodily from the tomb, bodily from the tomb, the empty tomb. Okay, I, so I, give I, me a, a theory that explains all three. Okay, I, I'll answer all the questions here. Very okay. okay. Yeah. First of all, the empty tomb was a story, was a lie. It was a story made up. Now, you have okay, to... so that, that, that explains, okay, we're saying it's a lie, yeah, go on. I need to explain it very quickly, you have to let me quickly explain it. Basically, the, the, the evangelists who wrote the Bible had to come up with these stories to prove that Jesus was the Messiah. They, they had to come up with these crazy stories, that someone died and then came back to life after three days. There was an empty tomb. Uh, uh, when he was 14 years old, Jesus, he was debating with the rabbis. And how does a 14 illiterate, how does an illiterate peasant who can't read or write debate with the rabbis? These are all lies. They had to come up with these crazy stories. Uh, Pontius Pilate's wife has to get involved. All kinds of madness has to happen. Oh, um, uh, the, the Jews uh, uh, pressured uh, Pontius Pilate into crucifying Jesus. These are all made up stories. Pontius Pilate does not need anyone's approval. Jesus committed treason by attacking the temple. He was crucified. End of story. The resurrection never happened. They had to pick, they had to come up with these crazy ideas that oh you know there was an empty tomb and oh uh, uh, one two hundred people saw the resurrection or whatever madness they're gonna have to come up with. But none of these things happened. These are all stories. So it, your, your argument to account for these three historical facts that Christ was they're crucified. They're historical fact. That's your opinion. No, it is a it is no. I'm I sorry. Just Hold, to you. I'm sorry. Let Let's be clear. Is the resurrection uh, a historical uh, uh, fact? Let's, no. Let's be really clear. It is an historical fact That's that Jesus. Opinion. Let me finish. It is a historical fact that Jesus Christ was crucified and died on a cross. It is a historical fact that the first Christians went around preaching that Christ had risen from That's the dead. That's not the point. The point is the resurrection. No, hold on one second. Is the resurrection hold a on one fact? second. Hold on one second. I got you there. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. Now, so the historical fact is that the first Christians did go around preaching that Christ had resurrected from the dead. And the historical fact is that the tomb was empty. Now, you have said that all these things are lies. Yes. So what you're saying is you don't believe in any history. No, no. Listen to what I'm Give saying. Give me a historian that agrees Bob, with your Bob, position. Listen to what I'm saying. Give me a historian that agrees with your to position. What I'm saying very no, good. stop. Give me a historian that agrees with your position. You've made a big boast about how most it's all lies. Most of the historians in Name the world. Them. Name them. Name them. Most of them. It should be easy for you. You've read into this. Name them. Because Bart Ehrman doesn't agree with you. Bruce Mesker doesn't agree with you. Daniel Wallace doesn't agree with you. James White doesn't agree with you. I'm talking about anyone. Okay. Give anyone, me, Reza anyone, Aslan doesn't agree with you. Reza Aslan didn't say the resurrection happened, so he does agree with me. He <laughs> does not agree with you that the, the crucifixion is a lie, that the first Christians went around preaching no, I do believe that was Christ was no, risen no, no, from the dead no, is Bob, a lie. No, Bob. You're saying that all of these things are historical lies. No, I believe he was crucified for treason. Do you believe that the first Christians went around preaching that Christ had risen from the dead? Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure on that one. I'm okay. not really sure on that one. So, does Reza Aslan believe that the first Christians did not go around teaching that Christ had risen from the dead? I think he believes that they thought that he was the, they, they thought he was the Messiah. They thought he was the Messiah. Okay, you, 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 you're, I basically the history and, and the academic historians agree with the three points I've given. 
I'll explain to you. You have got no historian that you can back yourself up with. You are simply making assertions based on your, your own personal presuppositions. Okay, I'll explain to you this. Where's your scholarship? I don't need to have a scholarship to prove the resurrection never happened. Well, yeah, but then we, so, so how, which of my three need, facts are you disputing? From Harvard to say that the resurrection never which happened? of my three facts are you disputing? I'm disputing the resurrection. I, I haven't declared that as a fact. I declared that Christ was crucified, yeah, the, that the first Christians yeah, the, preached the, Christ the, as resurrected, no, no, sorry, sorry. and that the tomb was empty. Wait, 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 wait. Which but, 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 of those wait, wait. facts are you disputing? I'm disputing the empty tomb. You're disputing the empty tomb? Okay. Yes. I do believe he was crucified for treason. So we, do we, we're in agreement on the first one? Yeah, we agree on the first one. The third one we disagree with. Okay. And what's the second one? The second one is that the first Christians went around preaching that Christ had risen from the dead. I believe they were preaching that Christ existed and he was a uh, he was an amazing man. Okay. But I don't believe they were preaching that So now that he was... bring forth your evidence. Uh, the, what, what do you say? The second one was he was preaching the, uh, the gospel. That Christ rose from the dead is what the first Christians preached. You're saying that is not true, so now I want you to produce your evidence. No, actually, I think that is true. It I, is true? Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, so we've established two of my three facts. Yeah, but I First agree fact, Christ was crucified and died on a cross. Yeah, I said that. Second fact, the first Christians went around preaching that the resurrection actually but happened. But that is not the point of my question. Okay. The point of my question is, is the resurrection a historical fact? You we're, know we're, it's we're, not. We are coming to that. You have, you so, have. so. In terms of the, the, the preaching of the first Christians, yes. they went around saying Christ had risen bodily from the dead. Okay, yes, I'll give you, I'll give you that one. Okay, why? I, I, I'm not, I wasn't there, was I? So how can I answer that question? It's a ludicrous question okay. to answer. Why is it a ludicrous question? We know historically that what I'm saying is accurate. I... The, f the church existed before the New Testament. You're aware of that, right? Yes. Which testament right. are you talking about at the moment? The New Testament. The New Testament. Yeah. So the, the church existed before the New Testament. If you'll just bear with us, brother, because I'm talking to this guy. Thank you. You're going. You're going in another tangent here. No, I'm really not, because this is evidence. We are talking about specific No, hold on. Life right, one second. Let me just link it back, because you're, you're missing. You're missing the link. So let me explain the link for you. Yes. Okay. The reason why I'm bringing it to the New Testament is this, because the New Testament counts as historical evidence of what the first early church believed. Yes. yes okay? Yes. So we can look at it as an historical document to know what those people believed. Now, whether it's true or not is a slightly different question. It's a matter of opinion, yes. But, but what we can know is what the early church believed because they wrote about it to one another. They wrote about it for themselves. They wrote about their beliefs. Let me give you one example. In 1, Cor in 1 Corinthians 15, we have what is indisputably one of the earliest doctrines of the church. Well, the historians agree about this. Listen. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received. So he's saying, I preached it and you received it. Yes. In which you also stand by which you also are saved. So he's talking about the theological implications of this belief. If you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. So again, he's talking about the, the theological implications. These are not our concern at the moment. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received. So he's actually claiming that what he received, he's getting it from an earlier source. So he's, he's crediting an earlier source for what follows. And this is what he says, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised and on the third day, sorry, uh, on the third day, according to the scriptures. Is this New Testament or Old and Testament? This is New Testament. And he appeared to Cephas, then to the 12, and that he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now. Now this and that and that and that, you won't know this from the Greek, but grammatically that and that is not actually necessary in the Greek language unless you're making kind of like um, a PowerPoint presentation to use modern parlance. You're, you're making a list, like a shopping list. So in other words, he's reciting an early creed. Now this letter was written between 10 and 20 years after the events that they're talking about, which means that the creed that he is quoting is something that existed before he wrote the letter. 
which means that we can know with certainty that the earliest Christians believed that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he raised on the third day according to the scriptures okay. and that he appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. After that, this he appeared to more this than 500. This, this is, is not... from the New Testament. Okay. So, yeah. so, I have given you evidence as to what the early Christians believed you're saying that that is not true, so give me your evidence. Look, look, that is not... The basic, the basic premise of our conversation today yeah. is in looking into the life of Jesus. I, I, I'm, I'm looking at it from a historical perspective. So am I. I'm not looking at it from a biblical perspective. The Bible is historical evidence, you know that, right? A lot of what the Bible is, is lies, a lot of it. When, of, no, that's your assertion. You're of, asserting that. Give me your evidence that it is lies. Evidence. Show us, show us. Okay, 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 I'll give you one. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. According to Rez Raslin's book, I'm going to give Rez his book because I mentioned his book before. Yeah. As you know. Is he paying you? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I don't like Rez Raslin, to be honest. Yes. He's a Muslim, I'm not. Okay. I think, I think he's... A... Anyway, no. carry on. What, what, what is your evidence okay. that the Bible is lies? Okay, okay. You have to listen to me. Listen very carefully. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. We're listening. Okay. Show us how it is. Okay. The evidence Rez Raslin talks about is certain things in Jesus' past. There's, there's, a mention, uh, there's, a, there's an incident in the Bible where Jesus debates, as a 14-year-old, Jesus debates with the, with the rabbis yep. about the finer things in the scripture. Yes? Yes. Do you agree that it's in the Bible? Yes. Okay. Now Rez is going to explain to you, and I'm going to explain to you, because obviously Rez is not here, so I'll have to do it for him. Rez is going to explain to you that that passage in the Bible is a lie. Why is it a lie? Well, if you let me speak, I'll explain okay. it to you. Yeah. If we, if we look into the historical evidence, now I'm looking from the historical evidence. Yep. I'm not looking from a biblical perspective. Yep. I'm looking at the historical evidence of who Jesus was. So that evidence is... If you let me speak, if you don't keep interrupting okay. me. Okay. From what we know of, of Jesus, he was an illiterate peasant. So how can a literate peasant who cannot read or write, who's basically a tramp, someone who's homeless, how can a homeless person who cannot read or write, who's an illiterate peasant, be debating with the rabbis about the finer scriptures in the Torah? Okay, may I reply? Firstly, you said you was going to produce evidence outside of the Bible about Jesus' life. I've given you from Reza Aslan's book. That Reza Aslan is a 21st century scholar. I am asking for evidence about what happened in the first century. Yeah. No, so where is your evidence outside of the Bible that, about Jesus' life? Now, you didn't actually bring that up, so maybe you'll come back to it. But secondly, no, secondly you said that Jesus couldn't read. Yes. This is just not true. The bar mitzvah, <laughs> That's a lie. the lying. bar mitzvah, You're the lying. coming of age in Jewish custom, the way you come of age is that you read the Torah in the synagogue. That is how you come of age within the Jewish paradigm, the Jewish religion. Christ at his bar mitzvah would have had to be able to read, otherwise he could not undergo a bar mitzvah. Every Jewish person would learn to read. Not every Jewish person would learn to write, but they would learn to read. Where's the evidence of Jesus' bar mitzvah in the Bible? It is the, the custom of the Jews to have a bar mitzvah. Where is the evidence of Jesus' bar mitzvah in the Bible? I got you there again. There isn't. This is just, I got this you is again. Just, you lost again. This is just the custom. I got you again. This is just the custom. Now, You're wrong. You're you wrong said again. you was going to bring evidence. I just answered. You answered my own question. Okay. I so where you. is your evidence? Where is your where, evidence? Where is your evidence? Bob, Bob, where is Bob, your evidence? Bob, Bob, where is your evidence Bob, that talk. you referred to Bob, about Jesus's life Bob, outside of talk. the Bible? We can't have a debate. Okay, I want you answer answer that question for me. Yeah. Bob, answer that evidence. question. Where's your evidence? Jesus did not have a bar mitzvah. Where, so you're lying. where is your evidence? Jesus had no. Where's the evidence in the Bible? Where's your evidence? I asked you. We know it? Jesus read because it go. It, there's. I asked you, Bob. I asked you. Where's the Jesus? I'm going to show you that Jesus Bible? could read. No, Jesus is bar mitzvah in the Bible. Okay. Don't change the subject. You're saying that Jesus you couldn't keep read. Keep changing the subject. You You're keep... saying that Jesus couldn't read. I'm going to show you that you read. I said he was a literate peasant. You're saying that he was illiterate, that he couldn't read, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So explain this to me. Show him, Bob. Now, uh, please note, ladies and gentlemen, yes. that despite now having at least ten minutes to produce his evidence. <laughs> He has not produced any evidence at all Nothing. about Jesus Christ's life as a child. Yeah. So yeah, no, I maybe about the Bible. I no, about the you Bible. didn't. You quoted Reza Aslan's book. Yeah. That's all that you no, said. No, I said in the Bible, Jesus. That is quote. all that you said. No, I said Jesus has a. Where is your evidence that, that's from that the Bible. Jesus? Where is your evidence that you're quoting? No, Jesus in the Bible says he debated as a 14-year-old. Where is you your evidence? It. That's in the Bible. Where it don't smack my Bible, son. Jesus, Jesus. Now. Come on, son, relax. Yeah. 
Right, so let's, let's, let, 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 us, let us just find the verse where Jesus reads from the scripture. As a 14 year old, yes? No, we're gonna, you're saying that Christ was an illiterate peasant who yeah. didn't know how to read. No, I'm going to show you that he read. Come on. Okay. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna let YouTube find the reference, or, or maybe um, so JC as you can, can see, find Bob it. Can't find one the second. Evidence. One Bob, second. <laughs> Bob can't I'm going to quote evidence. it to you. JC's <laughs> gonna find it on the phone, and then we'll read it to you. But Christ goes into the synagogue, and as the guest rabbi, he opens up the scroll to where it says that I have come to preach good news, to set the captives free, to give sight to the blind, to heal the sick, and then he sits back down and all eyes are upon him. And then he says, I tell you the truth, in your hearing these words have been fulfilled. And the crowds were pleased at what he said. Are you saying he had an And education? then he goes on to say that he compares the fact that lepers and people that were healed were non-Jews and the synagogue becomes enraged by him and they want to take him to a cliff and throw him off. That's the, the summary of the passage that I want to read to you. We'll get you the reference and then we'll read it to you. But what this indicates is that what you're saying, that Christ was an illiterate pleasant, yes. is false because he clearly could read. I would advise you to read Reza's book. So Are you going to when, read Reza's when, book? When, no. If you want to buy me a copy, go for it. So Why when, do you buy when, your own copy? That's, when that's, when, that's when you want me to read the book, I, I've, got you, I've got you a copy of it. I can give you a copy of the book. So what? Okay, I'll buy the copy for you. Will yeah, you read thanks. it? Yes, if you buy it, yeah, of course. So, so let me let me ask you this question, right? The scriptures show that Christ read. So why do you say he was illiterate? What evidence do you have that he was illiterate? I'm talking from Reza's book here. You yeah, but what evidence does Reza give that Christ was illiterate? Yeah. He said he's, he looked at it from a historical evidence. What evidence did he produce to you that okay. convinced you? Oh, okay. I, I, what I, evidence? I'm trying, sorry, I'm memorizing in my head. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's um, fair enough. Okay. I think from what I gathered he was saying is that back then very few people had any education. Most of the people who were educated there were the rabbis. So he's making an enemdation is what you're saying? Yes. Right. So that, and it, right, uh, you sorry. need to be clear. An enemdation, an enemdation is not evidence. Sorry, I haven't finished yet. Evidence. I haven't finished yet, Bob. It is a, a guess. Bob, I haven't finished yet. Go on. He's saying that the, the place that Jesus was living, I think this was um, Nazareth. I know, obviously there's all these... Uh, issues about where he actually is from, whether Nantus or Bethlehem or whatever, it, wherever he was from, from back then, very few people were educated. A lot of the people there were illiterate and they had no education. And I think Reza is absolutely right. The people back then who were educated were the rabbis and maybe the, uh, the Roman governors and people in high positions. Jesus was just a normal guy. He basically was, he was basically a tramp, basically. But he was an illiterate peasant. I don't even know if he was even a... Okay, got it. Thank you. Right. So. My, my, my compadre here has made the assertion that yeah. Christ could not read yeah, and he's exactly. basing that on an enemdation by Reza Aslan. Yes. But I've asked him what evidence Reza Aslan posited to make that assertion. He's talking about historical and evidence. All, yes, and I'm asking you what historical evidence? I asked you to read Reza's book and you don't want to read okay, it. Okay, oh no, you, yeah, you don't want to read is, it. This is, he's just he not seeing the buy, point. He told me to buy he's, a copy. He's just, he's just, just not, he's just not, he's just he not listening. Want to buy yeah, himself. buy me a copy. So, let's be clear. Let's be clear. You have cited zero zip and you haven't been able to give any evidence to back up the enemdation. An enemdation is a guess. That's what an enemdation is. Riz Aslan is making a guess and you have not provided any evidence so for the guess. What are you so I will give you evidence. One second. I will give you evidence from the first century, from the time by people who were born of the community that knew Jesus and they say this and the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him Jesus and he opened the book and found the place where it was written which means that he reads the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to proclaim uh, release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set free those who are oppressed to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. Clear evidence from the first century that Jesus could read. Right. Bob, now, Bob, what evidence can you provide that Jesus was illiterate? 
But I, I said Reza Aslan's book, and obviously you're going to deny Reza Aslan's book. I'm asking you what evidence did Reza Aslan give you to say that Jesus was illiterate? I, I, didn't, I didn't memorize the whole book in my head. All right. He, I do not know of any evidence that speaks of Christ in such detail outside of but, the New Testament. You can even know Jesus Christ is uh, reading this. I, I'm just having a talk with this brother, and, and then I, and then I'll come no, just, to you. Just I'm asking you a question. What? What's the question? Uh, Very quickly. Believe Christ, uh, Jesus Christ, he written this book. Jesus Christ is written of in this book. Yes. He wrote this book. He, no, he didn't write this book. He's written of in this book. Okay. Okay. Reza, there's just two things, and I, I'm going to have to go. Do you accept this as this evidence um, that Christ could read? It's written down in a book. I don't say. I don't say it's yeah, evidence. Yeah, it's not. It's not just written down in a book. It's it's written down in a book of the first century. Be fair. Be fair. And answer that question. Why, why are you selective in your evidence? Yes. Because I don't see the Bible as evidence, that's why. Ah, right. Because so, I, I, have I not explained to you for the past half an hour that I think the Bible is a book of lies? You have said that it is a book of lies, and then you have given no evidence for that accusation. Exactly. I have. I what? Asked, what I asked, evidence? I asked you about Josephus, and even you mentioned that Jesus, Josephus... What? You're, you're, you're once again trying to make an argument from silence. That doesn't work. It's non sequitur. Yeah, you what? can't make an argument from silence. Okay. The reason why you can't make an argument from silence is because you can use silence to make any argument. That's why you don't use silence as an argument. But, 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 but the point is, there's just two quick things I need to say. One was the, the story I just told you about Jesus as a 14-year-old debating with the final... Which you said Jesus couldn't read. Yeah. So I said, where is your evidence? And you provided none okay. except okay. an assertion. Bob, and Bob. then I contradicted no, Bob, your Bob. assertion just... with evidence Bob. that Jesus could read. Bob. Yeah. Whether Jesus could read or not, as a 14-year-old, would he be able to debate with the final scriptures of the, with the rabbis? Clearly. At 14 years old? Clearly. At 14? Yes. Nah, that's a lie. Why is it a lie? I'm Muslim, no, I'm atheist. I don't believe it. You used to be a Muslim. I used to be. So don't get me killed tonight. Why does this brother have to worry about his life just because he stopped believing in Islam? True. It is, it is seriously wrong. He's trying to get me into trouble. I'm not trying to get you into trouble. Well, it's, it's okay, I think that you have the right not to be a Muslim. And I think it is wrong that you should even have to worry about the fact that you're not a Muslim. Yeah, that's why I don't debate with the Muslims. Well. But, but why is it that we are living in Britain in the 21st century and we have, a, by albeit an atheist, you know, a bit misguided, but otherwise <laughs> a very pleasant guy, yeah. worried about what might happen to him? There's something wrong in the UK and the establishment does not want to deal with it. Yeah, yeah, you're you right. should not, not be here in fear listen, and listen, you should listen. not have to worry. No, Carry I mean, on your point. He's not worried about nothing. I'm the Muslim, look. He has today. just said you he's worried. Muslim, so he's not. No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to be, ara I don't like to be around him too much I'm, because I think, I some, of them get a bit, I think some of them get a bit too aggressive and they get a bit... Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Anyway, yes. you, I'll let you have the final point and we'll, we'll stop there because yeah, we've been going, yeah, we've been I, going I, at it a while. I, 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 yeah, I've been speaking for too long, I'm sorry. I just you haven't, you haven't. It's been a really interesting and good debate. I'm and sorry to keep you too long. Like, if you you haven't, honestly, you haven't, don't worry. Hey, good I'm just getting tired and, and I need to walk around a bit. Yeah. My feet are cold. I, I, I came in last Saturday, sorry, last Sunday looking for you, but Lizzie was here. Yeah. And Lizzie told me you only do the morning shift, that's why you were gone. <laughs> right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I only I do like the morning the shift. shift. <laughs> yeah. When I, I spoke to, when I, when I told Lizzie, this is what I said to Lizzie, I said to Lizzie that Jesus is not coming back. Yeah. And she obviously got incredibly offended by it. And I'm not making this up, after five minutes she ran off. Okay. Well, we've been stood here for more than five minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's one last thing I was going to say to you. The only way Christianity is true, the only way Christianity is right, the only way you're not wasting your life coming here every Sunday, the only way you're not is if Jesus comes back. Okay? That's, no. That's the only way you can be true. No, the only, the only, the only thing right. that validates my faith is that Christ rose from the dead. If Christ yeah, yeah. didn't rise from the dead, then he's definitely not coming yeah, back. Yeah. If he did rise from the dead, he definitely is coming back. Amen. So actually, it's the resurrection that is the central to my faith, not the, 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 the but as I explained second to you, advent. As I explained to you, the resurrection never happened. So obviously okay. you're not going to take my you, word you, for you, it. You've asserted that, but with no evidence. So you're saying 100% so, Jesus right, is coming we're gonna, back. Right, we're going to stop there. Yeah. I want to give you this. You've been a very pleasant person to speak to. Thank you. Have a lovely Easter. Thank you. Bob. Don't get too fat on chocolate. No, I won't. You know, yeah. and, and maybe next week we'll, we can pick up our conversation again, yeah? I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I might if come you back. follow me on Twitter, yeah. on Soko Films, we can communicate directly. Yeah, I'll come back on, but I'm going to be doing my atheist preaching. I'm going to be preaching atheism. Okay. I'll, do, I'll do it for one more week. I don't really come here every Sunday. That's so. fine. That's fine. Have a read of that. Have a think about nice what we've discussed. You, nice you look after yourself okay. and stay safe. Thank yeah? you.
Yeah. So we've had a, a very interesting conversation with a, a very fine fellow. Um, I don't know. I can't remember his name. Um, an Asian, um, an Asian atheist, a former Muslim, um, and, and it's been a very interesting conversation. I, I think that the, the problem for those who want to argue against the resurrection is they have to have a theory that has explanatory power of the available facts. And the available facts are these. Christ was crucified and died on a cross. Christ, the, the first Christians, did claim that Jesus rose from the dead. And they were convinced of it, that Christians died for that belief, especially the first apostles, that the tomb was empty. Whoever comes up with a theory to explain those facts must account for them all equally. And as Dr. David Lycoda would point out to you, who is a historian, the theory, the hypothesis with the greatest explanatory power of all the available facts is to say that Christ truly rose from the dead. And what we find by those who deny this is that they cannot account for these facts. They struggle to account for these facts and what they do instead is they come out with a theory that might explain one fact or two facts but then doesn't explain the others. The most probable explanation is that the resurrection really occurred and this is the ultimate proof of the existence of God. It is a historical fact that Christ rose from the dead because there is no better explanation to explain man crucified, first believers preaching that he had risen from the dead, those first preachers dying for that faith and the empty tomb. We have not yet had any hypothesis, certainly not the Quranic one, that can better explain these realities. And it isn't just Christians that are arguing these facts. Bart Ehrman agrees Christ was crucified. He's not a Christian. Bart Ehrman agrees that the first Christians were preaching that Christ had risen from the dead. Bart Ehrman agrees that the first Christians, certainly Peter and Paul, died as martyrs. He might dispute the others, but he accepts those too. So what we have is even non-believing academics asserting these facts. Bart Ehrman does disagree with the idea of the empty tomb. I'll give him that. However, the scholarship, the historians, uh, David, Dr. David Lycona, Dr. Daniel Wallace, Dr. Bruce Metzger, Dr. Bart Ehrman, um, Dr. James White, these are, are reputable scholars who would argue that the evidence is clear about these facts. And then we must decide what explains those facts, what narrative explains those facts. And I am personally convinced that the most convincing narrative is that Christ truly rose from the dead. And I am yet to hear a better explanation by atheist or Muslim.